Hey y'all, so I want to come and talk um, very freely about how I feel about the passing of um, Olua Twain or Twain. I have so many feelings about this. The timing of when all of this is happening is just depressing during a pandemic, during pro protests, during just like continuous death after death that we keep seeing of people who are the color of me. But the situation with Toyin was something that really like shook me to the core. Um, first, the first thing that came to my mind is just like my mom's name is Toyin. So um, Toyin means like, I think someone who's deserving of praise or God deserves praise, that's what it translates to in Yoruba. So she's a Nigerian American person. And um, the reason this like really hurts me and hits me differently is because there's a conversation that isn't being had um, when it comes to being black, um, especially in a time like now when we are organizing, when we are protesting for our lives. We are often forgetting that there are people who are getting their lives killed by people who are the same color as us. And I think this is something that has to be said and has to be talked about in our community. But the reason Toyin's death was sad first is because she's a fucking teenager. She's 19. I think you forget just how young she is. And for her to be 19 and have so much passion, so much fucking energy, so much like devout knowledge on her blackness to the point where she went to a protest to defend and to talk and to and to show love to a, a black trans man who died. She was protesting something that all black people should have been protesting, but because of transphobia, a lot of people were not saying Tony McDade's name. A lot of people were not mentioning the trans women and the trans men who are also dying. So she's already going to a protest to discuss something that is not already being spoken about on the same levels of like a George Floyd or any other cis person who's dying, cis man. So that in itself, like the fact that she's going there out of her own time at 19 to go and, and protest the death of someone who should be alive, just like her, she's also letting you know that she is facing sexual violence. Like she, the fact that she had tweeted what she tweeted, the fact that she had let people know that she was molested by somebody just says so much. Another reason that this really hurts my feelings, sorry, someone's like mowing the lawn. Another reason why this really hurts my feelings is that as a black woman, as a dark-skinned black woman, we already know the ways we are preyed on from such a young age, from people in our own communities, from people who are not in our communities, from the fact that we are never safe being black women. We are never safe just generally in the minute that people can sexualize your body and even when they can't sexualize their body it's just done so the fact that she had already been dealing with so much sexual violence up until the point of her death and the fact that sexual violence is something that is just plaguing her whole life is so fucking sad because she's a teenager because she's young and like what me i'm older you know and hearing about that it makes me sad but then i have to remember what i what happened to me at 19 and it's not any different than i'm sure the things that she's going through the things that she's been through the fact that she had the what i thought was so interesting was when she had her situation where she was sexually harassed or or almost raped or raped by this person who she exposed his address i was so proud of her for exposing the things that this person had done i was so proud of her for opening and saying this is where he lived this is what he did because we need to stop protecting abusers we need to stop protecting abusers it is fucking disgusting the ways that people harm us and then we are supposed to keep quiet and when we speak up we're seen as being you know trying to take someone down we didn't we never even talk about like the legal things just even literally mentioning it is already too much for some people so the fact that she had already put him out and was living in a way where she's being open about her experiences, the fact where the guy who ended up murdering her picked her up and she had told him like, hey, I'm dealing with a lot of trauma from sexual violence and he still took advantage of that is fucking sickening. It's disgusting. Like, And the thing that I think about is like, this man is 50, 50 51 or something like that. 
she's 19. Let's be real. If she was 17, if she was 15, he wouldn't give a fuck. You know, like he wouldn't care. He wouldn't care. Like the fact that he knew he was so much older than her and he knew he was literally preying on her. It just reminds me of the times in which men try to make advances at young underage girls and they know that they don't give a fuck what the girls have been through because what they want is more important than her life. And ultimately she died because what someone wanted from her was more important than her being alive. And that's fucking gross. Another thing that makes me very sad about her death is the fact that like she wasn't even, she had nowhere to go. So when you see her doing this beautiful protest, when you see her giving this speech on her blackness, saying things like, I will die for this, saying things that her blackness is so important and she must use her voice. As she's saying these things and everyone's like, yes, queen, yes, yes, yes. She had nowhere to go. No one checked on her to see how she was getting home. And I don't wanna put pressure or shame on her friends who were there because I don't know what they're going through, but check on your friends when they leave places, please. Check on your black femmes. Check on us because often we will be the ones who will be, you know, giving the most and have no nowhere to fucking retreat. And that's sad. Like, she should have had somewhere to go. She should have been checked up on. And just thinking about the fact that the reason that, from what I've read online, the reason that she fled her home the way that she did was because she was experiencing sexual violence in her own home. And... The fact that young girls often have to make a decision between their own safety and being complicit and compliant and shutting the fuck up. I'm sure if she shut the fuck up, her parents or they would have been okay with her living there. I'm sure if she shut the fuck up, didn't complain that she was getting abused and beaten and raped, people would have been more okay with her. But because she spoke out, because she spoke out at that abuse and because she spoke out of the death of Tony McDade, she's not alive. If she didn't go to that protest, she'd likely be alive. And the fact that like us speaking out, us choosing to live a life of honesty, us choosing to not live a life of shame can equal our death from so many fucking sides, not just from black men, from, from, from white men, from white women, from POC, like it literally does not matter where we are not protected. And another thing I want to also address within this whole conversation is the way we protect abusers because this all contributes to the same motherfucking culture. Like this is all the same culture. When you know your homeboy is is catcalling a woman and you say ha ha he's like that that adds to that same culture because ultimately his like is more important than her life right so every time you allow your homeboys to make inappropriate comments and you just say oh that's him every time women bring up that your friends are abusers your friends are a bit rapey and you're just like yeah mm, and you don't say nothing that adds to it Every single time we give platforms to abusers, known abusers, because we're like, you know what? He has something good to say. Every single time we choose to listen to abusers then choosing to listen to victims, that adds to it. Every single time we get mad at someone for speaking up and we say, oh, they're trying to take down that person's reputation, that adds to it because ultimately rape culture is integrated into everything that we fucking do. So if you're not willing to listen to people talk about rape culture, talk about their experiences on the other side of rape culture because you are too wrapped up in defending people who make, who literally add to the fucking deaths of black women, then you also add to that same culture. And that is not exclusive to men because I also see a lot of women who defend abusers. That also adds to that same motherfucking culture. You can't say rest in peace to Toyin and then also give platforms to rapists and abusers. You can't say rest in peace Toyin and also get mad when someone speaks out and speaks their, ex their experiences of being uh, uh, abused. You can't say rest in peace Toyin and have friends who you know have done inappropriate things and you say nothing. Y'all can't say rest in peace. Y'all cannot because you don't actually feel sorry for her death. You feel sorry for the fact that she's not here but you don't feel sorry for the reasons that she died which is because of fucking violence. It's because of sexual violence. And we refuse to look within and ask ourselves, how are we contributing to that? Because we all contribute to rape culture that ultimately killed this black woman who was so bold that she called out all of her abusers. Like, I hope to have that kind of fucking courage as I exist in this world. I hope to be so motherfucking free, I can let people know when shit happens like she did. I fucking commend the fuck out of her for being so open with the things that have happened to her. Because a lot of us don't give a fuck. A lot of us don't want to hear that. 
but she does not care because the truth of who she is and the things that she's been through and the truth of what is right like standing up for our trans brothers and sisters and siblings like standing up for black women like calling black women's names like calling out injustice mattered more than her fucking life and that is so sad because speaking out should not mean that you die it should not mean that you die and it is so sad it is so sad that a black woman is not here because of sexual violence and people knew and people know every time and they don't say anything it is sad like rest in peace twin like really rest in peace and i hope people can really use this time to see that the way we treat black women, the way we don't listen to black women, the way we gaslight black women, the way we give platforms to abusers to organize Black Lives Matter protests, the way we keep cis men at the forefront, cis black men at the forefront of speaking on blackness when sexism still exists in our own community, that all contributes to fucking rape culture. And we are not, black lives don't matter unless all black lives matter. And as soon as y'all get that in your head and you start coming to those protests of trans people, you start saying the names of black women, you stop acting like being a black man is the most oppressed thing when black men can kill black women. When we get that through our heads, then let's have a conversation. But for me, all black lives matter. And I will always fucking fight for that. And I hope y'all will too. I hope y'all stand up for black women because our lives matter just as much.